I'm going to go up to the filter menu and I'm going to choose this command right here, liquify. Or press the keyboard shortcut, command shift X or control shift X on the PC in order to bring up the great big old liquify dialog box. And really, in most regards, it's less of a dialog box and more of a little painting utility. Right in the center of the dialog box here, we have an image preview. And this is both your preview of how an effect is going to look and your painting environment. So this is actually your image window. And notice I even have a little cursor here, a little brush cursor that allows me to paint inside this window. I have a series of tools along the left-hand side of the dialog box and just a load of controls over here on the right-hand side of the dialog box. Also notice that we are seeing the layer, the active layer by itself and subject to no blend mode whatsoever. So we're just seeing the active layer. Even though he's clipped inside of a pepper and sent to the multiply mode, we just see him as if nothing's happened to him whatsoever. That's good in a way because it allows us to focus on this active layer element. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in by pressing the command key or the control key on the PC and clicking inside of the image. You can also press the space bar to get the hand tool, of course. Now, notice my brush cursor. I want to call your attention to the brush cursor for just a moment here. Notice that its diameter conforms to this option right over here, brush size. And right now, for me, by default, the brush size is set to 100 pixels. And I could modify that value if I want to, or I could click this right pointing arrowhead and get this slider bar right here. But there's a better way to work, and this is a way that I want you to get in the habit of working. Notice, if I go ahead and press the escape key to leave that option, Notice that I can press the right bracket key to increase the brush size by increments of two, or press the left bracket key to decrease the brush size in increments of two. Now that's a great thing. However, it's a very fine increment, and it means that you sort of have to hammer on that key or hold the key if you want to increase the brush size dramatically. So in previous versions of Photoshop, for example, if you wanted to dramatically increase the brush size, you would press and hold the right bracket key. And then you'll see that brush size value increases pretty quickly, and it actually now increases more quickly inside of Photoshop CS than it used to in the old days. But it's still a little slower than you might like. Fortunately, now inside of Photoshop CS, you can accelerate things even more by pressing the Shift key along with one of the bracket keys. So if I press Shift left bracket, for example, notice that I decrease the brush size in increments of 20. And the same goes for shift right bracket. Or you can press and hold shift in one of the bracket keys and you'll really whip through the brush sizes. So remember the bracket keys and the shift bracket key combos. Now that we have a sense of how the brush size works, let's get a sense of how the tools work. Notice there's a series of tools along the left hand side of the dialog box. And the main tools are these tools right in this area here. They're the main distortion tools. So the first eight tools allow you to distort the image in different ways. And actually, the very first tool, which is now known as the forward warp tool, used to just be called the warp tool. Now it's called the forward warp tool, is the most useful of all the tools. Let me show you how it works and why it's now called the forward warp tool. It allows you to basically drag image details. For example, I could drag this guy's eye upward. And notice that I'm being pretty careful here. I'm dragging pretty slowly. And the reason is, if you drag too quickly or drag too far, you're going to just make these ridiculous modifications, which are quite humorous and a lot of fun at parties, but not too useful for real life image editing. You know, the pig nose effect, for example, or the wacky buck tooth effect, you know, humorous. But how useful, I wonder. If you want to make realistic edits, you need to go pretty slowly. So little tiny baby steps at a time. And even this, I'm not so sure I'm doing the most realistic distortion right now. But you get a sense of how this works. So it's sort of a smudge tool on steroids. Now, you may wonder, well, where does the forward warp come in? Well, if you press the Option key or the Alt key on the PC and drag over your warp, you'll unwarp. And notice you can either drag or just sort of hold in place. And as you hold, the warp gets undone. 